I went into a sales job first, actually, within Janssen. I went into R&D for a few years and then followed a, a product through into marketing. Uh, I became a board member, uh, managed a, a business as a managing director, a small business in the UK, part of J&J, &J, and then did a few jobs, uh, both uh, European jobs and also a job in the US, setting up our virology franchise. And then was uh, asked to sort of look after half the region that I'm now responsible for. And then subsequently took over the whole region about uh, close to three years ago now. I'm a sponsor of our sustainability group globally for the pharmaceutical group. Um, I chair our Corporate Citizens Trust, which is our corporate giving in Europe, um, cross-sector actually. Uh, I'm an advisory member of a Women's Leadership Panel, HBA. And all of those are quite dear to my heart, those topics as well. So the business with that uh, is really great. I love my job. Uh, you'll have seen in the press recently that, uh, that Janssen has uh, formed a lot of external collaborations recently. We've uh, really increased the number of collaborations we've got with universities, with small biotech companies. We've set up three innovation centers globally recently in, in California, Boston, London. Uh, and hopefully we'll be opening one up in, in China soon. And these are really uh, aimed at fostering collaboration between small biotech, between uh, university uh, research establishments and ourselves. You know, the mantra really from our head of R&D is, you know, we'll, we'll follow the great science wherever it is. There's also collaboration between pharmaceutical companies. And I think I sense that the industry at the moment is more open for collaboration than it ever has been. There's a lot of sharing of science, I mean, particularly in areas, for example, like uh, Alzheimer's, which is a really tricky subject to try and get at and to, and to innovate in. Now, I think it's absolutely correct that the industry has to demonstrate value for money. And, you know, we will do that by bringing, uh, as J&J as &J and Janssen will do that by bringing, you know, high innovation in areas of high unmet need. I think the industry does need to try to work to say, can there at least be some sort of common HTA assessment, not a common pricing and reimbursement um, framework, because each country will be different in that respect, but to, to assess drugs in the same way, to to uh, have the same comparator, for example. It's not the same in all countries right now. Uh, Germany, for example, is being, you know, uh, really tough on, on what comparator, you know, is needed for some of these compounds. So there are two things that we've been discussing recently. One is transparency of doctor payments, and the other is transparency of, of uh, clinical trial data. So with the, with the doctor payments now, uh, we agreed at the General Assembly that there will be transparency on that and uh, there'll be more news coming out on that uh, in the future. Uh, and also on data transparency as well. The industry absolutely understands, you know, uh, the general public's requirement for us to be more transparent on, on the data. And that too, uh, we're making progress. I mean, as a, as a company on our website, we're quite clear about what our transparency policy is right now. And I think you'll have a coalescing of the industry, move that topic forward. Because, you know, it gets in the way sometimes of being able to have open dialogue and being a trusted industry if people think, you know, things are being withheld or hidden. And I think the sooner that that transparency can be, uh, can be made, the better. Every protocol that's set up is lodged on a, you know, website, clinicaltrials.gov. Uh, every uh, clinical research uh, program, you know, ultimately will be uh, public after approval of a product. Um, clinical study reports, uh, there's some discussion over at the moment, but in general there will be more transparency of data. Uh, as long as it's not uh, compromising the, you know, the commercial aspects and competitiveness. Uh, but I really think that uh, it will break down some barriers if the industry is seen to be more transparent in that area. And I'm quite sure that, you know, by the end of this year you'll see more transparency commitments from, from companies. There is a whole spectrum of activities that we have ongoing. One of the main things is that we help with health literacy 
and we work more with societies and, and countries to, to help educate and build infrastructure. So it's not just about putting money in for various projects, it's about enabling you know, uh, communities and societies to, to move along that journey of, of setting up healthcare infrastructure and then delivering better healthcare. But then the other part is our access activities around some of the products that we've researched. So, for example, in HIV, uh, we have um, waived our sort of uh, IP rights on Duranavir, which is, is one of our products, uh, in Africa, so that it makes it easier for um, you know, other third parties to, to manufacture. So that improves the access. Now, these are because people in our industry care about societies being decimated by those diseases. And it's not a precursor to, to something else. It's, you know, it's pure uh, you know, social responsibility on, the half, on behalf of you know, corporations such as J&J. &J. Uh, I think the advice to myself might be, you know, don't underestimate what you can do. I see a lot of young women who you know, aren't really confident enough in their own ability. And uh, I think it, it, can, it can hold women back to a certain extent. And I, I, I think that uh, that's advice I'd like to give to people like myself, you know, like I was uh, starting off a career, is be confident and, and uh, don't underestimate what you can do and, and how well you can do.